Thanks, David. It was only a few years ago I was at this same eVelocity event, and I was sitting in a chair like all of you watching these presentations. The presentations were all different, of course, but they did a great job of convincing me that it was time to buy an EV. Pretty much straight after that show, I did exactly that. We bought a Leaf, and looking back, it's either been a fantastic or a terrible idea, depending on who you ask and when. I've loved every minute of it, minute of it but as David mentioned, the root of the problem is that I, well, actually, I loved every minute of it, but part of the problem was that I only bought the EV partially for its superior driving experience, environmental benefits, and low running cost. But as David mentioned, I'm cursed with being an engineer, so my real motivation was to tinker with it. And for the past uh, dozen or so years, I've been playing with automotive electronics, so uh, it was really all the technology in an EV was far too much for me to resist. And since then, a significant amount of my time uh, has gone into EV-related projects, um, both uh, with, with the battery and other things. Um, but from, from the start, the EV battery swaps and upgrades were something that I was really interested in. Um, but it's only been very recently that we've made some technical progress in this area, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Oops, too far. There we go. So a reasonable place to, to start before discussing swaps is, is how long does an EV battery last? We've heard various figures thrown around, um, but what do they really mean? We've already heard from some of the other presenters that the majority of components in an EV are inherently much more reliable than the equivalent parts on an internal combustion engine car. Of course, there is one significant part that is likely to reach the end of its useful life uh, in a vehicle. Uh, that, that is important to note, it's just in a vehicle, not the end of its useful life in, in general. Um, but that is likely to reach the end of its useful life for, uh, before other parts of the car. Most of the rest of the car will be able to go uh, a lot, lot longer, and um, it seems like a shame not to take advantage of that. And most of us have replaced a battery in a cell phone or a laptop before without much hassle um, or cost uh, involved, but EV batteries are much larger, they're more expensive, and they're more dangerous due to the higher voltages involved and the amount of energy storage. So battery replacement is a valid concern for a potential EV owner. The good news is that most of us are preconditioned to think that the situation is actually a lot worse than it really is. Thankfully, EV batteries tend to last much longer than those in your cell phone or your laptop, particularly in countries like New Zealand with a relatively mild climate. But EVs and consumer electronics both share similar lith lithium-ion batteries. So why is this? A significant reason is that the cells in consumer electronics are allowed to be charged to higher voltages and lower voltage and discharged to lower voltages than their EV counterparts. This allows the consumer electronics to get a lot more energy out of the same charge uh, for a battery, uh, for a given battery size, but it does stress the cells more, which means that they don't last as long. Essentially, when your production EV says that it's charged to 100%, it isn't really charged to 100%, it's just charged to the highest level that the manufacturer is comfortable with. So the EV batteries tend to last longer, but how much longer? We've already seen some uh, data from this, uh, from some of the other presenters, uh, particularly Flip the Fleet, um, with, uh, here we go. So I've actually stolen some of the data from Flip the Fleet on this. That median case there, the blue line, uh, is, is taken from, directly from their data. And that, I've also included a worst case, and that's basically, I've been and sat in uh, hundreds, uh, many hundreds of leafs, and, and the odd ones that stick out as being a um, particularly uh, degraded case, uh, made a note of those, and that's where that worst case data comes from. So the blue line uh, extrapolated out, assuming a linear uh, degradation, um, that could indicate that we could be looking at something like a 60% uh, degradation after 10 years. So it is uh, important to note that sudden battery failure is very rare. Uh, but degradation like this is normal, and it's to be expected. 
And it isn't completely a function of time as shown here, but time is a, is a very uh, major uh, contributing factor. So a 60% uh, car after, after say, say 10 years, that doesn't mean that the car uh, and that battery is done uh, in 10 years. That could still be a really viable commuting car for someone, um, which I'll, I'll go into, uh, I'll mention a little bit later. But there is another slightly interesting point, and that's Nissan's own battery warranty. That is the, uh, the little uh, purple cross at five years. So that would only apply to a Leaf that was sold New Zealand new. Um, but it is interesting to see that they either got really lucky or they really knew what they were doing when they were setting the threshold for that battery warranty. And in New Zealand, it seems unlikely that they'd be paying out uh, on, on many of those. Uh, in, in some other parts of the world, um, Australia and, and the US, um, hotter parts of the US, they have had to pay out but uh, on, on warranty claims through degradation, but uh, yeah, it seems to be unlikely to be the case in our climate. So let's, this is just looking at another brand of EV. This data is, uh, is very recent. It's mainly made up of American and European uh, Tesla owners. And the numbers are very impressive. Um, I think they should be taken with a little bit of a grain of salt, but they certainly uh, show that, that it is possible um, for, for battery degradation uh, to vary significantly between different models. But Teslas are a relatively rare thing in New Zealand currently. So going back to the Leaf, which is by far the most popular, um, it does seem like manufacturers uh, a, uh, have a good idea on, on what their batteries um, can and can't do and, and what, what typical degradation would be. So looking at their warranties uh, isn't, isn't a silly place to, to start. So as mentioned, the 24 kilowatt hour leaf, uh, the warranty says that within five years and 100,000 Ks, you should have nine or more bars. Uh, so that nine or more bars isn't, um, there's some wiggle room there because they get to set when those bars drop and, and it can be different for, for different models and even different firmware versions of the same model. Um, and then moving on to the newer 30 and 40 kilowatt hour cars, it appears that they've extended that warranty significantly out to eight years and 160,000 Ks. But again, that's based on their, their system of bars, not, not on a, a true percentage. So uh, there is actually evidence that they have also adjusted the, the positioning of those on the 30 kilowatt hour cars, but it is uh, obviously a bit early for us to say exactly when a a 30 kilowatt hour car uh, may change uh, from, from say nine to eight bars. It'd have to be said that Samsung, uh, sorry, uh, BMW with the i3 is pretty much leading with their battery degradation warranty. Um, they've given an actual number of, of 70% um, and, and the same time period as, as what the Leaf, uh, the current and, and new Leaf is. The Chevy Bolt isn't available in New Zealand. It's, it's only left-hand drive um, and, and currently not. Uh, there has been some talk of even bringing it, bring it here in left-hand drive, but uh, currently not available. Interestingly, um, not, not quite as, as good as, the Sam, as uh, BMW's offering with the Samsung battery, but, but not far behind. And Hyundai. Um, actually specifically uh, doesn't, uh, they exclude battery, battery degradation in their warranty. Uh, be interesting to see if they stick with that or, or if they decide to make a change. But uh, before, before people criticise them too much, uh, it's actually exactly the same for Tesla. Um, Teslas aren't uh, covered by any battery degradation warranty. Um, nor is the AutoSure warranty that's offered for EVs in New Zealand. But you have to kind of wonder, is a battery degradation warranty even a good thing? I mean, there are a lot of cases um, overseas in particular where people have been 
doing everything uh, that they possibly can to try and kill their battery as fast as they possibly can in the hope that they can sneak in under that warranty. Um, and sometimes the cars are, are too reliable to, to get there, um, or often. Um, so I'm sure that's not what manufacturers had in mind. You can kind of uh, understand the, the flip side of not offering a degradation warranty. So if EV batteries at some point will need to be replaced, um, that needs, that, that's worthy of considering, but not necessarily um, for, for the current owner. It really comes down to the owner's requirements. Uh, someone that has a, a short commute, uh, I personally have driven around a, an eight bar generation one leaf um, for, for a considerable amount of time and was really impressed at just how much that car could do. Uh, so it, it really comes down to the individual. Um, if someone's got a long commute, then it makes sense to spend a little bit more and, and buy something with longer range. If someone doesn't need that range, then there's some really uh, amazingly good deals on EVs that are already partially through their degradation process um, that can be really viable uh, cars for, for people for quite some time, um, even extending out long, long past that 10 years um, if, if, if someone's range requirements aren't high. And delaying a battery swap as long as possible is, is definitely a good idea. Uh, the battery technology is just getting better and better and cheaper and cheaper. Uh, back when the LEAF first came out, the, the battery cost to, to Nissan themselves was well over $30,000 um, and now it's something like a fifth of that. Uh, so it's not the kind of thing that you would want to be replacing on a, on a uh, frequent, frequent basis, just trading up as soon as the new version becomes available. It's really about what your needs are. And certainly uh, trading the car to someone else in the family with, with uh, shorter requirements is, uh, or, or selling the car and, and trading up to something else certainly stacks up as an as uh, alternative to a battery swap. So are new battery swaps viable, buying a brand new battery? Uh, currently, today, I would say not quite, but we, we're definitely getting there. Part of the problem is that currently vehicle manufacturers have absolutely no competition for battery uh, replacement options on their vehicles. Uh, basically the price that they charge depends on how generous they feel like being. If they want to make a big, big profit they can, if they are happy to pass it on at, at low margin then that's entirely up to them. And another problem is that uh, Often the New Zealand dealer doesn't offer uh, any support for battery swaps on imported vehicles. Uh, so that's, that's basically where, um, where we come in. Um, if, if Nissan was, was quite happy to uh, offer battery swaps at all of their dealerships, then, um, then that would be a fantastic solution. But um, in lack of that, uh, we've, we've had to step up and, and address the, the issue. The really cool thing about battery swaps, as, uh, as the technology improves, is that the car can just get um, to be as good as new or significantly better than it ever was new. Um, and that, that's uh, something that, that seems pretty exciting, that you could buy an EV that was uh, a few years old today for a, quite a bargain price and uh, make it a whole lot better car in the future. Just having a look at, there are people that people have often said, what are the true numbers? And uh, we don't want to mislead anyone, so I'll, uh, I'll just uh, give some examples of that. So this number is quite thrown around quite often. It's Nissan USA's uh, price for a battery swap. But that is uh, a little bit on the generous side uh, as a result of some of the battery degradation issues that They've had in, in the hotter parts of the US, they, they have had to offer, or, or felt compelled to offer a, uh, a quite, quite affordable battery pack swap. 
So in, in the US, um, that's what you pay, and I think that's, that's very reasonable, but I don't think that that's reasonable to expect uh, the likes of Nissan New Zealand to offer if they decided to, to offer uh, battery swaps. Uh, Nissan Japan's price is probably a, a bit more of a typical retail price with them making a, reasonably, a reasonable profit on the swap. Um, that includes fitting. Uh, going back to the Nissan USA price, one thing that is quite interesting is that they are charging the same price for a 30 kilowatt hour swap as, as a 24, so that's kind of evidence um, that that really as the technology is advancing that uh, it's not, not getting significantly more expensive. And as mentioned, uh, for imported vehicles, Nissan New Zealand's not, not currently offering anything. Uh, but that is something that we, that we are expecting and hoping will change. So I've said that new battery SOPs aren't quite viable at, at this point um, from a price perspective, but used battery SOPs uh, have gotten to the point where they are viable. So up until now, the only solution for a battery swap in the aftermarket has been to take a battery from a, uh, a lightly damaged vehicle and pull that battery pack apart and pull the battery pack apart from the original vehicle and swap a bunch of components between the two of them. Uh, this is because Nissan intentionally made a battery swap um, difficult for the aftermarket uh, so that the computer in the battery is paired to the computer in the car and if they don't match then it doesn't all work. Uh, effectively they're just trying to maintain a, a monopoly on the, on the battery swapping process. But we've managed to work around that. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the battery swaps that we're offering uh, don't involve the battery pack being opened. It's a much safer process, um, there's much less labour involved, um, it's basically a, a few hour job in instead of, uh, of uh, a full day or more job, um, and there's far less risk of um, making a mistake during the conversion. And the price is uh, significantly lower as well, uh, something in the, in the couple year old range um, with a drive in drive out uh, package is expected to be around the $4,000 range uh, depending on the condition of the, of the battery being removed. Uh, we do think, we have actually, one thing we didn't really factor in at the start is that quite a few people do actually want their old battery back um, for, for solar project, uh, storage projects and things. Um, so that, that is something that we, that we may have to factor in uh, going forward. So this is a pretty good solution, but it's not scalable. We're not going to be able to uh, do this for every leaf in, in 10, 15 years' time. There just isn't enough supply to, uh, to, to do that, which is where we need help um, from, from other aftermarket solutions and from this and themselves. So... <clears throat> BMW probably needs to get a bit of praise uh, again um, for offering a battery pack upgrade for the i3. Um, still not, um, well, it, it's available, which is a, certainly a really good start. And Renault has taken a similar step with the Zoe. Uh, Zoe obviously going right up to a 40 kilowatt hour battery is uh, certainly a really good example of an EV that can uh, become a much better car than it ever was new. Now this one claims that the 30 and the new 40 kilowatt hour battery pack are not backwards compatible with the 24 kilowatt hour cars, but surprisingly people have just accepted that as fact without, uh, without really looking into it in much more detail. So we haven't actually completed a 30 kilowatt hour swap yet, but we're quite far through the uh, R&D process there, and everything so far indicates um, that it's definitely no problem on a 30 kilowatt hour pack, and there's sufficient evidence that the new 40 kilowatt hour pack in the new 2018 LEAF um, may actually be the same, same situation. So these are some officially released photos of the new 2018 LEAF's 40 kilowatt hour pack. 
Um, and there are some differences shown in this, but this is just the officially released photo. Um, probably the main, the main things that stood out to me straight away is that some of the connectors were quite different, although the, the general pack layout and, and shape of the pack has remained the same. But these photos are actually on the production line of Nissan building the new 2018 LEAF and that battery pack there is identical in shape and connectors and everything to, uh, to uh, well, basically as much as we can see from, from these photos as what the existing ones are. Uh, so I'm thinking that much like the 30 kilowatt hour, it's really going, going to be a, a case of making the, the two computers uh, talk to each other effectively. Um, here's another picture of that pack there. So the, the steps that we'd really like to see happen and, and are working on, um, there are quite a few pro EV Nissan dealers um, who, outside of Nissan New Zealand, have have uh, taken to to importing and selling the Nissan Leaf, um, and between between their uh, efforts and and assistance fr uh, from the general public, we'd like to convince Nissan New Zealand to offer standard battery pack replacements for the imported Leaf. Uh, they're, they're definitely in the best position to be able to do that at a, at a, at a reasonable price. And this is the one that we're, that we're right in the middle of at the moment, um, which is probably the most exciting one for us. Uh, that's fitting the 2013 and later Generation 2 packs into the Generation 1s. Uh, it's not, not quite as straightforward as some of the other swaps that we've done so far, uh, but, uh, but it's looking very pro pro uh, promising. And last, last uh, we'd like to conf uh, d confirm and demonstrate that the 30 and the 40 kilowatt hour packs are backwards compatible. Um, and our hope is that that can stimulate discussion on the topic and pressure on Nissan globally to, to offer upgrade options um, for the earlier cars. And finally, developing a, a tool and information to allow other workshops uh, to safely perform battery swaps and upgrades without removing the battery pack, uh, disassembling the battery pack. Any questions on any of that? Yeah, so uh, generation one into generation one is is quite easy. That's something that we've uh, that we've figured out. Uh, but I th it, it would appear that uh, most generation one packs would only be a little bit better than the pack that you're removing. So the the most obvious one is a generation two pack into a generation one car. Uh, most again, most generation two cars are, are still quite far off um, the owners considering battery pack swaps. So generation two pack into generation car seems like the, the best place for us to, to start. Uh, well, we've got a generation two pack and a generation one car um, and slowly working through the issues. I mean, electrically, um, electrically there's no issues. It's just a communication uh, between the two computers that's, that's the problem. Uh, they changed, uh, changed the CAN bus a, a little bit uh, for the communication between the battery management computer and the uh, the VCM, the uh, the car's main computer. Um, so yeah, it's not it's not a. Although there's a connector adapter required, um, that that part's quite trivial. It's really about uh, about the communication side of it. But we're fairly confident that it can be done. Uh, 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 sorry, could you repeat the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, sorry. It, it is a battery replacement. We're basically using a good condition battery uh, from a a car that is in good condition, and the basically the tricky part of the process is once that battery is bolted into the car. 
the car will be in limp mode uh, because it recognises that that battery is not the original battery and uh, Nissan didn't want anyone but themselves to be able to clear that fault code effectively. So they've, uh, they've, that's the process that we've, that we've gotten around, um, being able to put that battery into, into, a, yeah, into a different car without, doing, without getting into the, the mess of, uh, of, of pulling things apart. Uh, it's really a, gener the generation, uh, a generation two to generation two swap. It doesn't really re require that much of a mess, uh, but putting a generation two uh, cells or modules into a generation one pack, uh, that conversion is, is a lot messier. Were you um, getting much traction with the Sims given the size of our market? The the Nissan dealers, um, I think, are, are going to be a big help here because a lot of them are, are, are basically on our side. Um, I think Nissan had initially had a bad experience with uh, selling the Generation 1 Leaf because they were very highly priced and they struggled to, to sell them. Um, so they, for, for several, or a few years now, basically didn't want anything to do with them. And... But that was Nissan New Zealand's decision, not not the decision of the individual dealers. And as uh, as those dealers have come back to wanting the leaves and importing them themselves, they're basically on our side trying to make that happen. Um, it does seem like there's not really a lot of coordination in them dealing with Nissan New Zealand on the issue, though. Uh, like it's, it seems to be individual dealers asking the question. Um, but I think having having those dealers uh, working together with the public to try and uh, get Nissan New Zealand to to uh, change their policy uh, would be would be the best way forward. But to to date, no, there hasn't really been. Uh, it, it really is just a policy change. It's there's technically no no reason why it can't be done. Um, it's done in other parts of the world, um, so it could it could change with the stroke of a pen. And um, and it hasn't happened yet, but we're still hopeful that it could happen. Yeah, so the Yeah, that's a really good question. So it was regarding the 30 kilowatt hour battery. Um, they've bought a car that is um, is is showing something in around the 80 80 something percent state of health, and and wondering if using Lease Buy to to track that state of health is uh, is the best thing, best way or, or if that's normal. So I would say with the 30 kilowatt hour battery um, that 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 isn't an abnormal state of health. Um, I yep yeah. I, I would say after one year, that's that's not abnormal for for the 30 kilowatt hour battery. Um, it does seem like they they are dropping um, when initially much faster, but but not continuing to drop um, at, at such a steady rate. Um, regarding using leaf leaf spy, it can state of health can be manipulated quite a lot through uh, driving and, and charging habits. So that does really need to be factored in uh, to... Well, if, 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 you gave, if you gave that same car to someone, for example, that did a lot of uh, long distance commuting in that car and, um, and did a lot of fast charging and things, then, then you would probably see that state of health rise quite, quite a lot. So it... Um, it's still a bit of an open question whether we know that tri charging habit, uh, driving and charging habits can change the reported state of health. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, it's, it's not an untypical number. Uh, like 80%, I'd say, would be untypical. That would be lower than normal. I would say in the high 80s is not untypical. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, that, is, uh, that is sort of the case with, with that battery pack. Yeah, well, yeah, we do have a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack sitting over there. Um, well, we might um, call it. Um, no, 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 that's fantastic. We have a question. Oh, I'm ha happy to um, discuss it more yeah. more afterwards if you if you want to discuss it in more detail. No, please do, and, and Bob is here for, for most of the day. I guess. Yes. Yep. So, um, thank you very much indeed. And. Um,